Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Filmation Clawful from Mattel. This is the final figure in the 2016 Club Grayskull subscription, giving us new figures based on the original Filmation, He-Man, and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series. Clawful here is a wonderful candidate for this particular line, because he is one of the characters who appeared in the original cartoon series who looked completely different from his original action figure. So let's check him out. As you can see, he comes in that same style Filmation Castle Grayskull packaging. It's got that nice slip cover that removes from the actual inner box, revealing a window box that fully showcases our action figure within. I really do love these Filmation boxes, and hope that if we get more Filmation figures from Super 7, they kind of keep this theme for these particular figures. I think it really makes them stand out as something fun. The back of the box even gives us an image of the Filmation version of Clawful as he appeared in that original cartoon series. So let's go ahead and pull Clawful outside of the packaging and take a closer look at him. Now we'll get more into detail when we take a look at the comparison time later on, but immediately you can see how different Clawful looked, and it's pretty great seeing this representation in action figure form. So let's go ahead and talk sculpt and details here. Moving in, let's start off with the head, which is the thing that is probably the most different. You can see he's got almost a snake-like appearance. I always thought that this version of Clawful looked very snake-like, but he's got those really nice, large, bulging yellow eyes that are very bright, and his skin tone is sort of this dark red, almost maroon color, which you can kind of see an even darker red seen on the spikes that are coming off the back of his head and run all down his back there. A uh, really, really nice head design. I think they did a great job of capturing the look of this character as he appeared in the animated series. Moving down the rest of the figure, you'll see his body does share that standard basic buck, but we've got some new things going on here, specifically with the harness that he's wearing, his little armor piece, his nice bright orange with a blue kind of jewel right there in the chest. Uh, it's nice and flat in color, so there's really no variation there, but it gives it that very basic, very animated look that we saw with these in the cartoon series. The trunks that he's wearing is the same blue in color. Uh, I will say that the red skin tone does have some nice shading that you can really see in the body there. There's a little hint of a black wash kind of worked in there that does bring out some of the muscular definition. So I do really like that. Uh, you can see the forearm pieces are different because we do have these little sculpted orange rings, which are pretty cool, and the claw hands. Now, again, these claw hands differentiate from the claw hand that we already got with our Masters of the Universe Classics version of Clawful. These are a lot less detailed. They're more rounded, they're smooth, there's no extra details there, and even the little jagged edges on the inside are shaped differently, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more when we come to his accessory. Moving down to the figure there, you'll see he's again got the very simplistic boot type uh, cuffs here. Uh, there's really no extra detail, it's nice and smooth, and then he's got the pointed clawed feet. So overall I think it's a really great design, does a good job of utilizing some uh, already existing parts, introducing some new pieces, and just giving us a very different clawful action figure. So while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and talk about articulation. That head is ball jointed per usual. You can see it looks left and right, up and down, rolls all the way around. Great range of motion there. The shoulders are ball jointed and they're very tight on this particular figure. They move upwards, forwards, backwards. They can swivel around there, which is nice. You got a swivel at the bicep. You got your standard single joint at the elbow. You've got your swivel at the wrist there, so you can spin the claws all the way around there, which is really cool. You got your torso crunch, slightly hindered by this uh, very straight armor that he's wearing, but not too bad. Then you also do have your standard swivel at the waist there. Ball joints at the thigh, so the legs can go outward forwards, backwards. You can see great posing there with that. Swivels at the thigh cut. Standard joints at the knees, which are very tight on this guy, which I do really appreciate, actually. Uh, we got swivels at the boot cut, which is always very nice. And then we do have the standard joint at the ankles on this guy, uh, much like we've seen in just the standard classics line. So you can see kind of rocks side to side, but doesn't really have that... Um, ankle pivot that we've seen, that rocker joint like on He-Man and Skeletor from the Filmation line. Um, it's actually a very basic uh, ankle articulation point and it's pretty solid. I do like that. I like how tight it is. So that is always helpful for standing these guys up on the shelves. 
All right, so Clawful here comes with two accessories. First up, he's got a new version of his green mace. Now, you might remember the vintage Clawful action figure and the classics Clawful action figure came with green maces. It's kind of been his trademark weapon. So this is a different version. The sculpt is a little bit different. You can see it's still a nice bright green. It is made of a very gummy plastic. Look at this. It's basically like rubber. It is so, so soft. I don't really like it when the weapons are that flexible. Uh, I thought maybe that was done on purpose to try to fit it in his hand, and here is why. I kind of talked about those new claw pieces on there. Well, he doesn't really get a very good grip on this weapon. You can't really push this in past this first little claw bump. It looks like you might be able to squeeze it in there, but I cannot get this to fit in there. Uh, as a result, he doesn't get a very tight grip on his club accessory. And that's the same for both hands. Now, the left claw is closed a little bit more, so he actually gets a bit of a better grip on there. But you can see he just doesn't hold on to it very well. Now, I don't know if that's maybe just me, but I, I can't get it in there. I just cannot get that club in his hands well. So, it's a bit of a bummer. He doesn't hold on to it very well. The next accessory is very cool. This is the Horn of Evil. It's another filmation artifact, something that came straight out of the cartoon series. There was an episode where Clawful and Trapjaw stole this and tried to use its evil against Castle Grayskull. So I thought that was really cool that it was included with this figure. It's very nicely sculpted. It's made of that same kind of softer plastic, but because it's a, a thicker piece, it doesn't really, you know flex around the way that the club did there. So it's actually nice and solid. It's got a really cool paint job giving it kind of a bone look there. And of course, Clawful's got those claw hands, so you can you can position it so he holds on to it. But overall, really great accessory and I'm very glad that this here was included. All right, guys, it's comparison time. So here's a look at this new Filmation Clawful figure standing alongside his vintage action figure counterpart where you can really see the difference between the designs there. Very, very different. And then here he is standing alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics version of Clawful. Now, I've also got that 2000X inspired head on mine because I actually like that one a little bit better. But that really does show you the huge difference between these two Clawful designs and why I think this was a perfect candidate for the Filmation lineup. So there you guys go. There is a look at the brand new Filmation version of Clawful from Mattel. I like this figure quite a bit. And as I've already said, this is the perfect way to handle Filmation characters, I think. I would love to see some more of those characters that had very different looks in the cartoon, like Tongue Lasher, get this kind of treatment. So fingers crossed that once Super 7 kind of gets the ball rolling and they start doing some more characters, we get more Filmation figures like this. Because I really love getting the very different versions of these characters in action figure form. So this was the last Filmation Club Grayskull figure from Mattel, which was offered December 15th for those who subscribed to the subscription. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. Don't forget to leave me a comment below, let me know what you think, and subscribe so you never miss out on one of my toy reviews. Until next time, my friends.